Today I'm going to show you how to replace a fuse without having the proper tools. It's absolutely necessary that I give the backstory as to why I'm doing this video because it's going to be something like therapy for me. So I'm going to tell you in a little bubble over here when it's done if you just want to fast forward and get to where we actually do stuff. But here we're going to start with the backstory. I very, very rarely on my free time, if I'm with other people, start messaging people or start answering questions. The one of the reasons I don't have a personal cell phone is because I don't believe in trying to focus on 10 things at once. If I'm at dinner with somebody, I'm focusing on them. If I'm out with friends, I'm focusing on them. I'm not doing this and texting on my phone and blah, blah, blah all fucking day. Now, I was out about a couple of weeks ago. I was on a date. It was about one or two in the morning and uh, we were at some restaurant that was still open in the Lower East Side and I get a message. And this just so happens to coincide with her going to the restroom. So I decide, let me look at the message. Fuck it. And I look at it, and it's somebody asking me a question about their no backlight problem. And, you know, is the women aren't like men that go to the bathroom, you know, take a whiz, wash their hands, and leave. I know she, she's going to be in there for like five or ten minutes, so fuck it. Let me answer the question. And it was a question about... Uh, an issue with the backlight and it says it was just where is the fuse here is the board I have and since this person was actually nice enough to tell me the model board they had instead of go where is the fuse on a MacBook which is the, you know the standard dumb question I get I decided let me be nice and answer them so I said oh, when you turn it upside down there's gonna be a speaker and a microphone in the middle of the speaker and the microphone when you take it off you're gonna see a black square chip that says LP8545 on it then next to it you're gonna see a six-legged FET chip and right next to that you're gonna see a brown 0402 package it's gonna have a white dot on it so it's a brown 0402 package white dot on it the white dot is your fuse good luck and then I get a message back and this this is kind of why I don't usually answer these at 2.30 in the morning. It's a message saying, okay, so is that F9800? I want to know if it's F9800. And I politely reply and say, no, it, it's 2 in the morning. I'm not, uh, no, I'm not going to try to download the schematic on my Android phone and scroll through 77 pages on a fucking Android tablet or phone or whatever I had at the time to find this shit. No, I told you where it is. Fucking replace it. And I get another question from the same person saying, okay, if I send you a picture of the board, can you edit it and put a circle around the fuse? And again, I've told you where it is. It's 2.30 in the morning. I've given you a lot of free information. No, I'm not going to interrupt my date any further so that I can download like fucking MS Paint or Photoshop for Android and then edit the picture and then send it back to you. No, no, no. I've given you the information. That is, that is, that is the extent to which I am spending time on this. And I told him, you, here's what you need to make it simple. I've told you where the fuse is. Once you find it, you need a 0402 fuse. That is the size. 24 volts, 1 amp. You can buy this off of Mouser or DigiKey. You have the specification. You have the size. You have the location. You have three pieces of information that not a single person on this earth gave me five years ago when I had to figure this shit out on my own. So go ahead and fix your problem. And then the person says, can I just put a solder blob over the fuse? And I go on to explain, and at this point my date is leaving the bathroom, no, you cannot put a solder blob over the fuse. If you put a solder blob over the fuse, many, many bad things will happen. A fuse is 37 cents. You go ahead and spend 37 cents so that you don't blow up your $1,000 computer. Sound like a deal? And right a little bit later, I get a message saying, okay, so I put a solder blob over it, and it turned on and turned off really quick, and it smoked, and now it doesn't work anymore. You moron! Why the fuck would you do that? You see, when I help you for free, I don't have the satisfaction of taking your money. Here's why this annoys me. If I don't have the satisfaction of taking your money, the only satisfaction that I have when I help you for free, when I take 10 minutes out of my evening for free, that I could have spent looking at Garfield cartoons or checking the news to help you, the only satisfaction I have is the working product that you have at the end, is knowing that you've solved your problem. So when you decide to do the exact opposite of everything I've told you to do, and you destroy your product, now, not only do I not have the satisfaction of having taken your money, I also don't have the satisfaction of having helped another human being. So you have not only screwed yourself out of having a working computer, you've also screwed me out of 10 minutes of my life. And that annoys me. You see, I understand if you fuck something up on your own because you don't have the right information. I understand if you fuck it up because nobody told you what to do because you're figuring it out on your own. I get that. I've been there. But if somebody who knew how to do this shit spent five to ten minutes of their time with a little fucking diagram on what to buy, what to do, where to buy it, how to do it, showing you how to do all this shit, if somebody did that for me, I would have to be a retard to do the exact opposite of what they told me to do and blow up my shit. 
You see, now you don't have the option to send it here. Because if I see somebody with your name buy that service on my website for 325 plus tax and send it in, I'm going to refund them and send that shit right back to them. Because I don't work with people who are morons. I try to avoid working with people who are morons. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how you can replace that for you so that you have no fucking excuse to do stupid shit, ignore my advice, and blow up your laptop. I'm going to show you how, with a soldering iron that is a tip that is almost the size of my pinky fucking finger, how you can replace that fuse just fine, even if you don't have top tier soldering equipment. Because I'll get these messages going, oh, well that's not fair, you have a nice rework station and all I have is a standard iron. That's not fair that you have nicer things. Well gee, do you think I came out of my mother's fucking vagina with a Hackle FR801 rework station? Do you think I came out of my mother's vagina with, with the soldering tweezers that were $200? Fuck no! I came to this, into this world with the same that you did. Nothing. And I started with the same that you did, which is probably a $7 soldering iron that has a tip that's as big as your pinky finger. And you know what I decided to do? I decided to not make excuses for why I couldn't make money. I, did, I had a choice. I had a fork in the road. I can wallow in my ignorance and my poverty, or I could take pride in my ingenuity. And I'm going to try to encourage you to do the same thing today. You should take pride in ingenuity. You should take pride in learning how to turn your $7 tool into $325 of revenue by trying to figure out what it is you can do when life does not give you the ideal scenario, the ideal situation. Nobody's going to walk up to you and go, oh, well, you don't have the tools to do what you need. Well, here are the tools. Oh, well, you don't have the money to buy them. Here's $500 to buy a rework station. No, life doesn't work that way, and the same is true with time. Nobody's going to walk up to you and say, Oh, I know you haven't had time to start setting up the things you want to do. Here's three days of freedom. You're going to have to make the time to do the things you want to do. You're going to have to make the money to get the tools to do what you want, and you're going to have to make the tools that you have right now work for you in a way that allows you to make money. And what does that mean? That means that, yes, you are going to have to use the $7 tool to do a job that is $325. And it may not be fair, it may not be nice, but it's something that you're going to have to do if you want to go from here to here. As a great actor said in that movie, uh, what is it called? It was uh, The Iceman, the, the Roy DeMeo said, uh, you know, oh, if you want to complain that life's not fair, you're talking to the wrong fucking guy. Well, same thing rings true here when you tell me that you have to put a solder blob over your fuse because you don't have a proper iron. Because if I can do it with this, then so can you. Now, let's move on. This is the motherboard that has no backlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the original fuse, and then I'm going to mount a new fuse. And then I'm going to turn it on right in front of you so that you can see that what I did actually fucking worked. And it's not going to look perfect. It's not going to look ideal because I'm going to be removing a 0402 package and putting on a new 0402 package with an iron with a tip that's as big as my pinky finger. But I'm doing it to prove a point. I'm doing it to prove a point that you do not need to wallow in your ignorance and your stupidity. That you do not need to wallow in your crappy tools and go, oh, I guess I just can't do work. I guess I can't make money because I don't have what other people have. You're going to make what you have work for you so that hopefully someday you'll have more. Alright, so what we have here is a board where somebody tried to do some shit on their own and it has no backlight. And that, it doesn't look like a fuse what is there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a fuse and then turn the machine back on. And I'm going to do it with this iron. So here is where the fuse is supposed to be. It's on crooked, which means that somebody probably soldered it and replaced it. But that doesn't, again, it just doesn't look like a fuse. It's not the standard color of a fuse. I don't know if that's what's going to fix it. But I figured I might as well try it out. And for once in my life, I actually have a modicum of spare time, so I have it. I, I, this isn't a rush job, so I can show you. So I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen wave soldering before. Wave soldering is something I got to see a long time ago. It's with through-hole components, not you know surface mount, but it's where the solder actually goes through. Like for example, this is through-hole soldering when it actually goes through the board. Uh, through it. What they do to put that on there like that and mass produce it is you'll have a board with solder mask on it, like this is covered in solder mask. Solder mask means that, you know, I could put solder on the board and I'm not going to break it. The solder's not going to stick and it's just, it's not going to burn through the board. And they put all the components in there and they get them in there tightly. And then what they do is they run it over this huge vat of solder. And it gets really close to the vat of solder and it's run over the vat really fast, but it never touches it. And what happens is this vat, the solder that's spilling out of the vat, and solder, 
gets sucked by the air into all the little holes in the board, which is how you're able to, you know, mass produce this stuff. And what I learned from that is that I could apply that same idea to my own soldering, even if I don't have the right tools. So in the beginning, before I had a Hack 51, what I would do is I would use, run the solder over the component on both sides that I needed, and I would use that to remove it. And then I would do the same thing to get the solder on. Now it's going to be hard on here because unlike the newer boards, the this is a 0402 fuse, not a 0603, so it's smaller. And it's also surrounded by other things that I could knock off. So on the board in question, the 820-2850, replacing the fuse is easy because there's nothing around it. Whereas on here, I could very easily knock off any one of these things in the side. So see what I just did there to remove that fuse? See how quickly that came off? What I did is I had my soldering iron set to a very high temperature. I much prefer a high temperature in less time than a low temperature in a lot of time. So what I did here is I had the iron, I had the iron touching both ends, and I, I let, let it sit there to get hot for a little while. I put a little bit of solder on it, and the surface tension of the solder actually sucked whatever the shit that was onto my iron. Now I'm going to put a little bit of solder on both of those pads. Oh, so by the way, if you want to talk to me about how life ain't fair, how about making your living doing micro-soldering when you have a hand that does this? Yeah, don't, don't, don't talk to me or send me messages about how life ain't fair, because I assure you I'm, they're not going to be well received. So let me get a fuse. This shit is so fucking small. I hate the ones that are white because I have a white napkin on this desk and I can't even see the fuse as I'm picking it up. This thing is so small that it jumps around the board, look at that. It's easier to do this work with a nice microscope. It's really annoying to do it through the viewfinder of a shitty camera. See, I, I'm gonna block the camera if I try to do that, so what I'm doing is I'm doing this work through the viewfinder, which is on a $100 camera. It's this little TN screen. And the, t the thing with the TN screens is if you move even the tiniest bit in one of the other directions, everything turns blue and shadowy and looks fucked up. This is a fucked up thing to be doing through a viewfinder. See what I do for you guys. Torture that I put myself through. Hush phone. I'm busy right now, motherfucker. Okay. You solder one side just to get it in. I'm gonna turn this around. Usually I would move my arm, but I can't move my arm because I hit the fucking camera. And we're gonna put the other side. Now I'm not satisfied with that because that looks like shit. That's crooked, that's nasty, and I try to do good work for people. Even if I don't have the right tool at the time. This is where we go into that wave soldering concept. We're going to try to get both sides and fill it with solder a little bit. Now see what happened? See what happened right there? Yeah, let's zoom in on that ship. Zoom. We're going to have to explain with some zoom. I can't explain with too much zoom because my camera's a piece of shit. Alright, I think that's as much as we're allowed to go. So this is where it is. Come on, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So what I did is I got the solder on both sides. Now when I had the solder on both sides, and I kept my iron there, it allowed the fuse to move around, and the natural surface tension just sucked it right into place. It's just like wave soldering. You use a vat of solder, and it'll stick to the pads as long as there's some air moving around it, as long as you're moving the iron a little bit as you go. So I got that fuse on there. Not only is the fuse on there, but it's straight. And the amount of solder that's on this compared to the amount that's on this or this, I have to say for not having the right tool, not to pat myself on the back, is pretty fucking good. This looks pretty professional. Now I'm gonna clean it off a little with some alcohol and a Q-tip.
I'm rubbing it kind of hard. I want it to rub it kind of hard. I want to know if it's going to come off if I rub it hard. I want to do work that doesn't stand up to scrutiny. So yeah, I am bashing it. Okay. Now, all of that is bullshit if it doesn't actually work. You didn't hear that. Wrong way. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. So this is the technician's desk and this is his tester screen. This is a DC board for a different computer, but right now I don't give a fuck because it will work on this one for the purpose of telling me if this works. It's just fine. It's a little sticker that means that that means that it's awesome. This is my charger. My technician assures me that this won't kill me, and I, I don't believe him. I'm sorry, dude. You're an awesome guy, but I just, I feel like I get scared when I see that fucking thing. Okay. Let's turn this bitch on. You know what would really help? It's if I attached a fan so I actually knew when I, it was on. What would also really help is if I actually hit the on-off pads instead of two random pads. All right, let's try to turn this on properly. I'm being trolled. This is not turning on. video on the camera but I actually ran out of storage on the SD card so it stopped recording. So with that said let me plug this in and let me turn this on. Also just for proving purposes as you can see this is the exact same solder job that I had uh, a few minutes ago. I didn't just pull a switcheroo on you. I assure you I wish I had a better excuse than, uh, than all of the RAM that I have for testing things in my store is fucking bad. So yeah, see this? Alright. Now we're going to turn this bitch on and see if it works. The fan's going to be nice and high because I don't have a trackpad plugged in. Here's my screen. And here it is turning on. So as you can see, a perfectly acceptable job is possible when you don't have the right tools. Uh, again, I, I just I don't want to hear people giving me excuses as to why they can't do things, as to why they don't have the time to do things, as to you know how unfair it is that somebody else has the tools to do something that they don't have the tools for. When you don't have the tools to do what you want, you figure out how to do what you need to do with the tools that you fucking have. And if you don't have the time to do something, you make the time to do it in your day by figuring out what's important to you and prioritizing accordingly. Uh, that's what this screen means to me. And this screen also is uh, how you can turn $7.00 and a soldering iron into $325, even if you don't have the right tools for the job.